far from your domain because I'm uh, working in planetary science most of my time. And I dedicated part of my time to the planet Mars and as well to the planet, um, the Earth as well. So the title of my talk is uh, Planet uh, Habitability of Planet. So first of all, I would like to, um, to give a definition of what is habitability. I think you should move here. So um, what you find in the literature is that habitability is a common understood as the potential of an environment, past or present, to support life of any kind. And um, this, whether life exists or not. So this is um, the, ma the main definition of habitability. So it's, it's really the conditions, the environmental conditions which are supporting uh, life at present. What are they? Well, we only have one example, that's the Earth. And um, we have, um, it's the only example we have today. So we have to, we have to, um, uh, to stick to that one for our understanding. Habitability conditions, well, we need to have um, energy, we need to have liquid water, and we need to have some nutrients. So these are the keywords that are necessary for uh, habitability conditions. So what I would like to emphasize is that these criteria are very much related to geophysics and to what we know um, about the interior atmosphere of planets. For the Earth, what we have, we have a magnetic field, we have plate tectonics, we have volcanism, we have an atmosphere, we have liquid water, we have gravity, a particular gravity, very sympathetic, we can walk here. Carbon, we have a, exactly as we have a liquid water, well, a water cycle, we also have a carbon cycle on Earth. We have a satellite, which is uh, the moon, which is stabilizing our obliquity. And we know, and uh, André Berger will speak after me about that, that a little change in this obliquity can change a lot in the, in the environment uh, of the Earth and in uh, climate in particular. And we also had and have some impact from asteroids and comets. So all these um, are the conditions we have on Earth. And of course we have we liquid water and we have energy and nutrients. But this liquid water and the presence of liquid water, they are related to all these phenomena that uh, I just mentioned. So whether you, if you want to have liquid water at the surface of a planet, almost you have to ask for all these elements that are list listened here. And the other way around, water influence these elements as well. Water influence volcanism, for instance, the atmosphere, etc., the cycles. Well, on, uh, on our solar system, we have other terrestrial planets. In, in addition to the Earth, we have Venus, Mercury, and Mars. We have as well the icy moons, but I will come back maybe later on that, uh, or during questions. But um, these terrestrial planets, uh, let us look at what, uh, if we can get uh, liquid water. This is the only, uh, well, um, a little bit complicated graphic here. It is the, the phases of water, and uh, you have here temperature, you have here pressure, and this is ice, this is liquid, this is vapor. We know that at one atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere, we're going from ice to liquid at zero degree and from liquid to vapor at 100 degree. Well, now this is where we are, we are for the Earth at present. So we have a kind of mean temperature of 15 degree. Um, we are going from mi minus 50 to plus 50, something like that. Uh, for Mars, well, Mars is here. So at present day, what we have, we have an atmosphere which is one hundredth of the atmosphere of the Earth. So we have, um, and we have temperature which are going from uh, minus 150 to maybe plus 20. And this, so, so we don't have liquid water, only marginally when it's uh, summer uh, at noon and at particular conditions, maybe then we'll have a little bit of water. But at present, there is no liquid water on Mars. What, are, what about the other planets? Then here is Venus. It's very, very 
uh, hot planet, it has an atmosphere 90 times larger, 92 times larger the atmosphere of the Earth, uh, very large greenhouse effect, temperature very, very uh, hot, very large. Uh, Mercury, well, Mercury has no atmosphere, but Mercury has, uh, so nights which are very, very cold, and days which are very, very warm, because Mercury is very near the sun. So, rocky planets on our solar system, well, we only have marginally uh, Mars and uh, the Earth at present. So this is the reason why the astronomers, they have defined what they call the habitable zone. So if you take the solar system here, this is our sun, and this is the distance with respect to our sun. And uh, this is Mercury, Venus, the Earth, <coughs> Mars, and the, the giant planets are here. And you see that there is a zone, a zone here which is called the habitable zone where you have liquid water in, under the conditions that you have an atmosphere similar as the one of the Earth, which you might not have, of course. And we will come back to that. So when, no, this is our sun, but if the sun is larger, of course, this uh, habitable zone will be further away uh, from the sun. And in the, if the star or the sun is uh, smaller, has smaller energy, then, of course, the habitable zone is further uh, near the sun. The, yeah, the stars. So this is what is called the habitable zone. Okay, now let us look at Mars. Mars is a planet where it's my favorite planet, and uh, you can find a lot of a lot of, a lot of uh, signs that there was water at the surface of Mars. You get uh, rivers, beds. You have deltas of rivers. You have icy water, you have uh, traces of flux, this is Valles Marineris. You have a lot of signs that there was water in the past of the planet Mars. So, if you remember the graphic that I showed previously, this means that probably at the beginning of the history of Mars, there was a larger atmosphere uh, at the, uh, above the surface of Mars. So that is the case. We can date what we see at the surface of Mars. It's my, it's my favorite planet, this one, because you don't have plate tectonic. That means that you don't recycle the surface of the planet. So you can read the whole history of the planet at the surface. So therefore, it's very interesting. And what you see is that um, this is the very beginning of the solar system. Present is over there. And what you see is that uh, at the very beginning of the solar system, Mars was wet. All the signs of water, they are here, almost all. Then, at a certain time, minus 3.5 giga years, then Mars is dry. And at present, indeed, Mars is dry. So Mars has lost uh, its atmosphere uh, about in about that time, at about that time. What has happened? Well, we have uh, uh, bombardments, we have had uh, impacts, comets, bringing water into the planet or volatiles to the planet or taking it away because of the impacts. Um, so this is one of, 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 of the key elements. But as well, we have had volcanism and as well, we had a magnetic field. This magnetic field will it existed at the very beginning of the solar system, and it disappeared at about four giga years ago. So the magnetic field, was, uh, field uh, there was an extension of the magnetic field at that time. So that's why I think it could be, habitability can very much be related to the evolution of a planet and the existence of geophysics of interior effects like uh, the existence of magnetic field. Of course, a correlation is not a demonstration. We have to understand what is going on, of course. Yes. So we will look inside the planet Mars, for instance. And it's rather complicated. Uh, it's a rather um, complicated slide. But uh, in a word, this in, in pink, you have um, the, the mechanism. And in white, you have are the different parts of the planet. So you have a convective mantle, you have a core inside, deep inside uh, the planet. 
you have an atmosphere. And for the Earth, this is a planet with plate tectonics. You have an hydrosphere, a cryosphere, a biosphere. You have a crust. This crust is going inside the mantle, regazing the mantle. You have volcanism, which degases into the atmosphere, degasing into the at hydrosphere, cryosphere, <coughs> weathering. And on that side, you have mantle convection driving a dynamo action be because of the uh, gradient of temperature. You can um, influence the core dynamo. You get a magnetosphere for the Earth. And this magnetosphere is shielding the atmosphere against the erosion of solar winds. So it's a very complicated planet that we have. This is Earth. Okay. Now let us concentrate on that part and explain a little bit that part. So what I mean here is that when you have a core and a dynamo, a magnetic field, you have a magnetosphere. This magnetosphere protects the atmosphere from erosion of the solar wind. This is what is shown here. Um, if you have a planet like um, the Earth, you have a large magnetic field or like Mars at the very beginning of the solar system, you have a large magnetic field and this here is the magnetosphere. It, it protects the atmosphere against the erosion of the solar winds. While when you have a small magnetic field or almost no magnetic field, you have a large erosion of the atmosphere going into the picture. So if you, we come back now to that one, let us look at this part now. This part um, is illustrated by this slide where you see on the left-hand side a planet uh, the temperature inside a planet, mantle of the planet uh, with a plate tectonic or this one on the right hand side is with a stagnant lid at the surface of the planet and it's very warm inside due to the stagnant lid. So the, the interior and the driving of the dynamo inside the deeper core, this is also related to what is going on inside the mantle and what is going on in terms of plate tectonic or not a stagnant lint or not, and all this enters into the game. So we come back to that one, and we know, take out, if I go back here, this is a planet uh, with a plate tectonic like Earth. Now we have the planet Mars at present. We don't have plate tectonic, we only have a crust, we have some volcanism, we have an atmosphere, but this is one is very, very small. Um, at the beginning of the solar system, the planet Mars had a dynamo action, had a magnetic field. There was a lot of degasing and there was um, a volcanism degasing into the atmosphere. Additionally, some impacts effect, I think this one, yes, some impacts from uh, comets and asteroids bringing some volatiles or taking out a part of the atmosphere. But at that time, we had a magnetosphere which is protecting which was protecting the atmosphere of Mars, shielding it uh, against the erosion of the solar winds. And uh, now this is for, to illustrate the effect of the impacts. The effect of the impacts can be either positive or negative. We don't know, we don't understand exactly uh, at this point what there are models which are uh, uh, positive and then negative and others that are negative in the sense that there are when you have an impact, you can use a hydro coats, simulate that, but it brings volatiles, but it also takes out a part of the atmosphere. And so the mass balance is still, uh, uh, must still be estimated. Okay, we are back to these planets. We concentrate here. But at a certain time, we don't have a gradient of temperature high enough to have a core dynamo. And therefore, the core dynamo goes away and therefore the shielding goes away, and at that time we can lose the atmosphere. So now we have the question, what is bringing the dynamo? What, what is maintaining the dynamo? You have two possibilities to get a dynamo. You have either a thermal dynamo, which is related to the gradient of temperature, this is like the, the boiling water, or you have a chemical dynamo, this is due to the precipitation of iron forming the inner core. We have that inside the Earth. The reason why we have a magnetic field is related to the fact that we have iron precipitating forming the inner core. 
And therefore, we have a dynamo. What do we have on Mars? We don't know. We don't know whether the core is liquid <coughs> or solid at present, but we know that at a certain time in the past, there was uh, a dynamo. So that is, uh, uh, that, that illustrates this, because there was a spacecraft which has been, um, which, has, which has done what is called a flyby, very, very, uh, very close to, to the planet, and the spacecraft has measured a magnetic field. But this magnetic field is here, it's, it's a remnant magnetic field. It's a foci. So it represents the magnetic field in the past. So there was a magnetic field in the past, and indeed all these rocks here, they are very, very old from uh, 4.5 to 4 giga years ago. And so you see that uh, the magnetic field was there at that time. Okay, so that's for Mars, and at present, we wonder where we are in the evolution. We know that uh, the gradient is not high enough to have a convection in the core at the present, but we don't know whether the inner core has formed completely or whether the inner core has not yet formed. So we don't know where we are at present. What we know that is that there is no magnetic field. So that is for Mars, and that is for Earth. So it's a very complex planet, Earth. Uh, we have a, um, a core, liquid core, with an inner core growing, and uh, we have a <coughs> magnetic field protecting our atmosphere. We have a cryosphere, we have an atmosphere. But André will talk about that. So the la for the last time, uh, part of my talk, I would like to speak about uh, how, to, how to try to, uh, how to see where we can look in other solar systems and try to find planets like the Earth. So I have already um, presented to you the uh, habitable zone, that is the habitable zone for uh, the sun or sun, like uh, J-stars. Um, this habitable zone can be further away or closer. We have seen that. These are the rocky planets uh, that uh, we have seen. Well, it's an old, it's an old uh, graphic, but I took that one because I wanted to show you uh, the, the, all the differences uh, that are possible among <coughs> the rocky planets uh, in, the, in other solar systems than our own. This is the dimension of the Earth. So you have uh, planets which are smaller but, uh, and, and some which are uh, bigger uh, called uh, super-Earth. So uh, large rocky planets like super Earths. So now, how to determine the best candidate for <laughs> habitability? Well, we have done some simulations, and this uh, this is uh, Leno, Lena Noak in my team, which did did that. We have done simulations where we this is time going as a function of time uh, with a planet with the dimension like the Earth. That one, we have changed the dimension later on. Uh, so that's the dimension of the Earth, and it presents you with the temperature, the viscosity, the velocity, and the depletion of the, of the surface into the mantle. So when you have depletion, when you have high viscosity, this means you have volcanism, you have outgassing, and you can form the atmosphere. If you don't have that, then you cannot form the atmosphere. So as a function of time, this is beginning, this is end, so we are going like that. Temperature is increasing because of radio uh, activity uh, effects. And what we see is that at a certain time, we have volcanism and you can build the atmosphere. That's for a planet. It's still without plate tectonic. These simulations, that's for a planet uh, with a um, stagnant cleat. But anyway, with such a planet, you can build an atmosphere. So now we looked at uh, what we, yeah, that's the summary of what I did. Now we changed the, the core inside the planet. And for the same dimension, we looked at the effect of the core. So we, we looked at how much uh, iron inside the planet you can have. And so here is um, a planet with a very, very thin mantle and a big core full of iron. And then you have less iron, less iron for here a little bit of, uh, uh, of iron. And what you see is that if you have a big core and a small mantle, you don't have, uh, uh, you cannot build an atmosphere, neither. So the dimension of the core 
is also important in these kind of questions. Then, uh, yeah, so that's it. Then we change the, dim the dimension of the planet itself. So uh, one is Earth, okay? 0 0.1 is like Mars, it's half uh, the radius, so the mass is about uh, one tenth of the mass, and these are super Earths. And what you see here is that for a planet composition uh, like the Earth, when you have super Earths, you cannot build an atmosphere neither. So in super Earths, you cannot have an atmosphere. But that's for a planet uh, without plate tectonics. So now we have to look at the questions whether, oh yeah, before that, um, before going into the question of the uh, planets, so we, what we propose is if you have a graphic which is known by the astronomers like that when you have the mass uh, of the planet and the radius of the planet, you have here what is called a rocky planet. This is um, uh, uh, full of iron and f uh, or uh, almost without iron. And this normally is full of uh, possibilities. But we exclude large planets in, in, in the habitable zone. We want to exclude the, these large planets from the habitable zone, if we consider stagnant lit planets. Last but not least, because that's the question for the future, plate tectonic planet like Earth. Well, this is Earth, this is Mars. We don't have plate tectonic on Mars. We have on Earth, so, well, we thought maybe it could be like that for a super Earth, we can have a, a trend like that and uh, uh, for the probability to have uh, plate tectonics. And so the larger the planet, maybe the, the, the larger uh, probability you have to, to, to uh, build uh, plate tectonics. But that's not really uh, the, the truth. You have really to do some uh, study involving plasticity and so on. And so, yes. This is one of the study. This is another one. <laughs> this is another one. This is another one. This is another one, and so on. The, the blacks are from our team. It was different uh, with different. So you see that at present we can't say anything about um, about plate tectonic. So still, further question for the future: If you want to look at uh, habitable planets on uh, in other solar or other systems, um, and uh, well, I, I hope I have uh, convinced you that geophysics is also very interesting uh, if we want to understand what is habitability and if you want to study uh, exoplanets in other uh, system like the solar system. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> I don't understand the argument for why a planet needs to be rocky um, for it to be, you know, considered a planet with possibility of life. I mean, from a biology point of view, maybe a gassy planet is actually fine. Uh, no, but you need liquid water. You need energy, you need liquid water. So you need to, to have an atmosphere and, uh, and, and the liquid water. Well, you can have, I think I have it. Yes. Liquid water is important as solvent for your chemical reactions. Awesome. But awesome. I can imagine a very, you know, liquid uh, water gas, you know, which sort of can be an environment for things to... But you, you are kind of right, because now the, this, can, this has uh, been presented uh, in uh, nature, I think, uh, very recently. And if you look at planet like Earth, you have this habitable zone. This is again this habitable zone here. You have the Earth, you have Mars here, etc. These are... Um, uh, super, uh, super Earth and, 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 and planets. And, but if you consider that you have not an atmosphere like the Earth, but if you have an hydrogen, <coughs> then you can also have liquid water at the surface. So that's also one possibility indeed. Yeah. But that's completely different atmosphere. And com yeah. So we, we don't study this, but maybe in the future. <laughs> But yeah, it's very interesting. Oh. A very naive question. You said initially Mars has a magnetic field and then it disappeared. 
and it's still quite weak because of the satellite measurements. There's random magnetic field, but still the plant does one know that it dates back to four, about 4.5 giga years, and that it was at the beginning, not sometime in between. Yes, well, well, in fact, we count the craters on the surface. That's why Mars is interesting. It, you don't have plate tectonics, so can, you can read what is going on, so you can count the craters. And the old material, the old part of Mars is in the southern hemisphere, where you have a lot of craters. In the northern hemisphere, you have, have <coughs> uh, resurfacing uh, due to volcanism, most probably. And, and then you don't see that. But in the, in, in the southern part, you have these um, uh, la large craters, which are still existing, and you can date. Well, you can date in quoted because what they do is that they, they consider the uh, amount of uh, craters on the moon, and then, yes, and then you have to compute the fluxes of asteroid going to the moon and going to Mars, and then, then you can, using the scaling that we have for the moon, because we have had some sample of material of the moon, so using the scale of the moon, you can deduce the scale for Mars. So it's a complex question. <laughs> it's not a naive question, it's a very complex question. Yes, thank you. Uh, in order to define ability, ability, uh, habitability of the planet, uh, you use only some definition of some kind of elementary form of uh, life? Yes. Or no. Because it's very different bacteria? Or, well, no, not uh, life. Eh? The definition of habitability is it's only liquid water presence. Yes, but I suppose that this is studied in order to understand something of maybe the potentiality of yeah, the so you can you, Yeah, you can show that if you do not have liquid water, that indeed the <coughs> chemical reactions do not go on fast enough. And then we can do the experiments, and I think that Johannes might know more on that than I do, but we can think, okay, let's take another liquid. Can we have the same reactions going on fast enough? The answer is no. And the issue yeah, is the that the water is a very specific <coughs> element in terms of its dipole moment, in terms of where the two oxygens are placed, uh, the two hydrogens are placed with respect to the oxygen. So you can really show how specific water is and it are these specific, uh, specific characteristics that are so important for water to be the key in the reaction chain of forming, of getting life. But, but are you interested to go a little bit beyond the, the chemical uh, uh, constraint in order to, to open yeah, well, pass towards the, the condition from elementary... So well, the, next, the next steps that you wish to know is what are the abundances of the other biogenic elements on the, the exoplanets. And that is what we, why we now have these new missions that will try to measure these chemical elements in the atmospheres of mm -hmm. other exoplanets and see if indeed the conditions are right for the potential life-forming species to have. Uh, to, to be found, but all of this is always in the condition that we take our own life as the only example we have and we know of how it could have, have developed. So it's really very much life and observer based framework to which we stick and which might be, uh, which might be wrong, or which might be too many. And you, you, you can still have. Um, life in the um, icy world that we have around the uh, Jupiter, uh, around the, uh, uh, yes, the giants. Because you have rocky planets there, you have water, you have icy crust, beneath the crust you have water, and this water can be, or cannot, be in contact with nutrients. Yes. And so you have the soup, and that's yes. it. Yeah. And there, extremophile, you find them in, yeah, yeah. you could find them there. And the Gordillon zone or the habitable zone is just for liquid water on the surface. <coughs> yeah. Yes, or just in the liquid water. Uh, that includes that. Yeah. yeah. But what about how to decrease that water? What you mean as in terms of life forming? Well, that's what I just answered. It is, there have been many chemical studies already that do show that water has such a specific chemical characteristics which are really needed. It's in terms also of heat capacity and so on, which is so specific that yeah, at this moment we cannot, we have not found any other 
solvents that can do the job as has been done of mm -hmm. as curing with water. Yeah. And so you can also show, you know, you can also see, for instance, why not displace them by solids. Yeah? And as we have done also with one of our PhD students, we have seen if we can form biomolecules, for instance, on specific um, solids, uh, rocks, yeah, and so on, and it's never as good as what uh, as efficient as what we have in this with uh, yeah. water. Yes. yes. But I mean, there are a lot of reasons why water is, is yes. and it's also the fact that it freezes on top. It's the only liquid where the solid phase is, is, has a lower weight, so that it's yes, not diluted. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the fact that it softens the, the, the crust of the earth so that phase tectonics is possible for real ga old gasping and for. But still, I mean, one should not say that uh, other kinds of biology and other environments are not possible. In fact, if we say so, we would never get funding for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's don't say that. But, but that is not really the point. If we, we want to look for <coughs> where they are for other life. So it may be that there are planets where there is methane uh, biology. But from all the advantages of water, the conclusion is this is the best place. And so, well, let us go first. Let us look for for that first. Of course, everyone takes carbon. Mm -hmm. So water yeah. has yeah. all the yeah. yeah. that other compounds do not have. Yeah. So it <coughs> nature look, uh, chooses the, the, the easiest way. <coughs> I think. Yep. Yeah. Time flow is essential to the diamond industry. <laughs> 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 one, one last question. Maybe it's unrelated to, to, to all this, but if you look from far away at the atmosphere of an, extra, an exoplanet, is there one thing that could, what is the most uh, probable telltale of existence of biological life there? Okay. Well, it's more no, 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 you need to, to, to find uh, these mo molecules that really tell you something on the biosignatures, and so that are, that are not the molecules that were present at first formation stage, but have been recycled. Eh? And methane is one of those examples. Yeah. Ozone is not. So, and not O2 anymore, maybe because O3. of O3. O3, O3. Yes. yes. O3 would be in life. Yes. That's, that's how, how it can be recycled by the plants, by its plant of And methane, we are looking for methane. Uh, at the planet Mars, for instance, just to and have an also, idea. We also <coughs> use the molecules which have a signature in the infrared. In? Okay. The infrared. In the infrared, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and so there are, so you, you're, you have this restricted view, and so and out of these ones, then you look for the ones that typically can point you to some biological sequence that could have. We should have, we should have been gone, but are still there. Yes. Infrared for practical. <coughs> so, yes. Yes. So you need to, to look through the bars. We have the water, and you, you, you wish also to look next to the water. Yeah. And ozone has never been found on asteroids, asteroids or comets or. Uh, no. Just <coughs> molecular oxygen. Okay. Just checking. Right. Mm -hmm. You're just checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>